I'm sure a lot of you have had to fill out different passwords, building accounts for things. And one of the questions they always ask you is, who is your best childhood friend? And the answer is the same for me all the time, Adam. Okay, so my buddy, good friend growing up since I was two, Dr. Adam Rosen now. He's got a doctorate in kinesiology. He was an athletic trainer at the University of Pennsylvania, and now he's a professor at the University of Nebraska. So he commented on one of the last videos we made about um, not having kids specialize at too young of an age. Right? He made a comment when I was saying how a lot of, um, you know, when we were talking about freestyle versus elastic, how we should change our different styles. He made a good comment about how we don't want to specialize at too young of an age, uh, the different athletes. And that was actually confirmed a lot this past weekend when we were at a wrestling clinic, a Joker wrestling club in Edison, New Jersey, uh, run by Gerard Perez, my first personal coach. And Sergey and Anatoly Belglasov, two of the greatest wrestlers of all time. They were both wrestled at the Soviet Union back in the 80s, the 70s and 80s. And they said that at their sports schools, so they would, they would join, when they got serious with wrestling, they started about 11 or 12 years old. And now that is actually confirmed in this book that we brought up last time, Secrets of Soviet sport tra Sports Training. So you're going to see me refer to this book a lot because it's just a gold mine of information, right? And what they said is they, didn't, they started wrestling at about 11 or 12 years old, and for two or three years, no competition. No competition. Now that's almost unthinkable in America, right? We start a kid up wrestling or playing any sport, we jump them right into competition. Well, what they said is they started around 11 or 12 years old, about 11 years old, and in this book it actually says um, age of admission into sports schools. So they have specific sports schools back in the Soviet Union, and for wrestling, the average age of beginning that sports school is between 10 and 12 years old. Now what it says in the bottom here is, in a child's initial months and years in the sports school, the emphasis is on all-around training, running, jumping, throwing, kicking, and some weightlifting, rather than on a particular sport. So first they build them into an athlete, and then after that, as Bell Glassoff said, they didn't compete for two or three years. So their competition probably didn't begin until they were 14, 15 years old. Now, we don't have to necessarily do it exactly like that in America because I know it's different with state championships in high school, NCAA championships in college, but the lesson is there. We don't need to throw our kids right into competition, and we definitely don't want to jump straight into um, only wrestling year-round without other sports. Right? We wanted to look to build the total athlete, build all-around athletic movements. So, And one of the other things that it makes me think of is uh, Mark Schultz, one of the Olympic champs uh, from Team USA, Dave Schultz's brother, right, the Foxcatcher movie and everything. And Mark Schultz, what they kept saying when he won the Olympics back in 84 in Los Angeles, they kept saying how he was a gymnast. And that made a lot of sense to me that if you want a kid to be a great wrestler or a great athlete, start them off with gymnastics. And why? Because if, you, if you're good at gymnastics, now you're basically an athlete. It's easy to make an athlete into any particular sport. It's very difficult to go the other way, take a particular sport and turn them into an athlete. But it's not just gymnastics. Um, playing with a ball when you're younger, baseball, football, soccer, whatever it is, getting different feels, hand-eye coordination, learn how to use your body, agility, cutting, turning, moving in different directions. So it's just very important. And again, you hear this by all these experts. When we talk about mindset, we want to be studying the best in the world, and we want to be training smart. We want to have a smart approach, right? So we want to be coming from an evidence-based model. So evidence-based means we're looking at the best in the world. We're looking at what the Soviets were doing. Evidence-based means we're studying what other experts are talking about. My buddy Adam, right? Professor, kinesiology, athletic trainer over at the University of Nebraska. Makes a lot of sense. He's saying you don't want to specialize at too young of an age. You see... Um, Dr. Yeses, who wrote that book, Secret of Sports Training. Also, he wrote this book, uh, One by Twenty. Uh, it talks about a, a strength training program for beginner athletes. So around 12 years old, when athletes start lifting weights, they don't just jump right into some kind of a weightlifting program that they would read in a muscle building magazine. And they don't jump right into a college program, right? So just because you see the Ohio State wrestlers are really strong or the Michigan wrestlers are really strong, you don't just give a 12-year-old kid the training program for the University of Michigan or Ohio State and say, okay, you're ready to train like, in a, like a college wrestler, right? No. What they would start them doing is a 1 by 20 method where they pick about 12 to 16 exercises and do one set of 20 reps, really getting a feel for each exercise, They're not jumping right into a, a three sets of 10 or six sets of five. These are highly specialized workouts that, the, that these college athletes are doing. So starting off at a more basic level, more exercises, one set, higher reps. 
And what's that doing? That's, in, that's increasing the blood capillaries, um, building tendon strength, ligament strength, which is very important for our foundation of sports. More important than the muscles is the tendon and ligament strength. And Louis Simmons talks about this, the number one, um, the number one powerlifting gym in the world, Westside Barbell. He said, you have to train your tendons three times as much as you train your muscles. So that's real key. That's why we want to be lifting. When we start competing in sports, first of all, competing with a lot of sports, then specializing at a later time. When we start weightlifting, again, we're not specializing right away in weightlifting. We're not specializing in sport. We're not specializing in strength training. You're getting a different feel. And then as you get older, and it's not just, oh, you're ready in a month or two, as months, as years go by, now you jump into a different strength program. I believe um, Dr. Yeses recommends year two of strength training, two sets of 20 reps. Now you're doing half the number of exercises, getting a little bit more specialized, but only two sets and a lot of reps. Again, the blood flow, the tendon strength, the ligament strength, setting you up with a solid foundation. As we said, mathematically speaking, the strength of a tree lies in its ability to bend. So don't just take it from me. Take it from Dr. Rosen, my buddy Adam. Take it from Dr. Yesis, Secrets of Soviet Sports Training. Take it from the Bella Glassoff brothers, world and Olympic champs um, from Russia, the Soviet Union back in the 70s and 80s. They're all saying the same thing. We don't specialize at too young of an age. We make sure that we're building a solid foundation to create a total athlete. And then as time goes on, we start moving into 13, 14, something like that. Then you start specializing in the sport that you're looking to do. That's our soup of the day. Don't specialize too early. Build an athlete first, and then you can make them into a great wrestler. We'll see you.